Good morning. Thank you, sir, for that prelude. As we begin our service today, I want to say good morning to you and welcome to our Savior Lutheran Church. If this is your first time here, I'd love to meet you after uh, the service and say hello, maybe learn your name and learn some more about you. Uh, if you've been here for a long time, you kind of know what we're going to do next. I'm going to tell you that we're going to continue in our sermon series called 4x4, uh, since there's no one else up here in these robes and a stole. I'm all you got today. Hopefully that is okay. Uh, but I will be preaching today on 3rd John as we move into the third letter of the John the Apostle. But before we get there, I'm going to ask that you rise and shake a hand, learn a new name. If you're joining us online, there's a QR code, or there was a QR code up in the corner. If you could let us know um, how you're doing, the ways we can serve you better, uh, what ways we can reach out to you and pray for you during this time. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it as we seek to serve you wherever you are. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning. That's peace. Good morning. As we make our way back to those seats, you guys are all excited to get on with worship this morning. Nobody really moved, which is a crazy thing that normally doesn't happen, but we're gathered together to bless God, to receive his gifts, to hear his word, to worship and praise him in all that we do. And we do so because of the words that were spoken over us in our baptism. We are brought into God's family in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our lives are in the care of God. God has given us abundance and hope. Today especially we come to praise and thank God for all that he has done for us. We gather to rejoice in God's love and to offer our lives in service to him and to others. Come, let us open our hearts to the Lord. Let us rejoice in God's goodness and love. Amen. Turn now to a time of confession and forgiveness. God of grace and mercy, we acknowledge before you the sinfulness of our thoughts, words, and deeds that turn us away from your love. We have not been genuinely grateful for the love you have shown us in Jesus, and we have not shown love or engaged in service to those around us. Instead, we have been hurtful, impatient, and unkind. Forgive us for the sake of Jesus, who gave his body and shed his blood to purchase and win us from all sins, death, and the power of the devil. Send your Holy Spirit to lead us in your way of divine peace and mercy. We pause for a moment of self-reflection and examination. God, our Father, loves us hears our confession, and speaks his steadfast forgiveness to each of us. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore proclaim to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue now with our opening hymn, hymn number 750, O oh, Praise the Gracious Power.
The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us pray. The prayer of the day together. God of kingdom living, move us from selfishness to selflessness. Make us willing to use our passions, gifts, skills, and talents in the work of your kingdom. Give us the courage to step into the life of another person with the kingdom. Amen. I invite you to be seated as we hear from God's word. Today's first reading is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 6. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Fear not, Abram, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and, I, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars, if you are able to number them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Today's second reading is from 3 John. The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in truth. Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoiced great, greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth, as indeed you are walking in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Beloved, it is a faithful thing you do in all your efforts for those brothers, strangers as they are, who testified in your love before the church. You will do well to send them on their journey in a manner worthy of God. For they have gone out for the sake of the name, accepting nothing from the Gentiles. Therefore, we ought to support people like these that we may be fellow workers for the truth. I have written something to the church, but Diotrephes, who likes to put himself first, does not acknowledge our authority. So if I come, I will bring up what he is doing, talking wicked, wicked nonsense against us, and not content, with that, not content with that, he refuses to welcome the brothers, and also stops those who want to and puts them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate evil, but imitate good. Whoever does good is from God. Whoever does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has received a good testimony from everyone and from the truth itself. He, we also add our testimony, and you know that our testimony is true. I had much to write to you, but I would rather not write with pen and ink. I hope to see you soon, and we will talk face to face. Peace be to you. The friends greet you. Greet the friends, each by name. This is the word of the Lord. The Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. We begin in verse 22. And he said to his disciples, 
Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, and yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. Any kids here this morning? I don't see any kids, but I know there's some watching online because they've told me, and so I'm going to go ahead and sit down. But this is going to be a little difficult to do a children's message that needed support without kids. Oh, so I'm going to have to ask you guys' help. No, you don't have to come up here unless you really want to. No, you're good. You don't want to come up. You're the youngest one here, man. You're like the closest to a kid. No, you're good. You don't have to. Really. I mean, you don't have to be young. We could have the oldest person come up. They might not be able to get back up off the ground, though, so you might have to come help them. No? He's just laughing at me and looking away. So this morning we're going to be, for our kids' message, kids, imitate good. What is good? Not everybody at once. You said you were going to help me. Chocolate is good. Well, we're not going to imitate chocolate. That's a little hard. I don't want to be nutty or bumpy or smooth. or Maybe smooth is okay, but we're going to skip that. What is good? Jesus is good. I heard God is good. But what is good that God does? What's something that we can imitate from God? Helping each other. Serving. Being generous. Helping each other, being generous. I'm sensing a theme. It's almost like you just listened to the readings that we just read. Love. Love one another. Anybody else? Be kind. Seek others good. So in 3 John today, the guy, Gaius helped other people. They came and he helped other people and he said, uh, John said, you're doing good by helping others, by being generous, by being kind. And then diatrophies, that's a weird long word, and I'm sorry, Brian, that we didn't go over that word beforehand. I apologize. Diatrophies didn't do that. He fought and argued and kicked people out. He wanted to be generous. And then we have Demetrius, the third guy, who had a good testimony, who was following God, who was imitating good, who was imitating what he was supposed to do. And that's what we're called to do, too. Serve others, love others, be kind to others, help others. Like Gaius, don't be Diotrephes. Don't be that guy. He's in there because he did something wrong. But that doesn't mean he can't do good. So if we are doing what is wrong now, we can pray to God and ask him to change our hearts to do what is good, to support other people. We have missionaries that we support all over the world. There's the school uh, that's in, in Africa, in Liberia, that we can support. We have people that we support that are missionaries in Africa as well. There's kids. My family just got a new, uh, new child to support that we help through World Vision uh, as we seek to give to someone to help uh, this child and their family live a better life. We can also do that right here in our own town, in our own place where we live. We can seek to help those around us. And for all you adults, you're going to hear a lot more about that in just a few seconds. 
But for kids, you can help the kids at your school. A school is getting ready to start soon. You can see someone who may be in need and, and help them. Someone who may not have a friend and go and befriend them and be kind to them. Someone may be playing on the playground and nobody's playing with them. We can go do that with them. We can go be Christ to them and support them and love them and imitate good for them. And don't forget to listen to your parents. That's always good. I'm going to make sure to mention that one over and over at the next service when my kids are here because we need to encourage that always. But we do that because God has given his son for us, because God gave us his love through Jesus. God serves us first. He gives us his love. And in 3 John it says that we do all this for the sake of the name, and that name is it's the easiest Sunday school answer there is Jesus my goodness I gotta get you guys some coffee or tea whichever one it is some caffeine to wake everybody up but we do it for the sake of the name for Jesus let's pray dear God we thank you for Jesus for what you have done for us through his sacrifice. God, help us to imitate you, to do good to others, to love them, to help them, to serve them, to be kind to them each and every day. All for the sake of your name, we pray. Amen. We continue with our sermon hymn of the day. Good morning to you all again. If you know anything about me, I like to try new things. And I was going to find some exciting way to talk about our 4x4 series, our four books in four weeks. 
I honestly thought about driving some four-wheeler into here, but I figured that would be a little over the top. Then I had found some videos that I thought we could play of a truck driving through the mud or getting stuck in some swamps and mud again flying over the top, kind of like our picture. But I figured that might be a little too much. Then I considered using one of those power wheels, you know, those little kid power wheel toys, they're four by four trucks and driving it around, but I figured that mental picture of me crammed inside this tiny little car that I'm giving you right now is probably not something that I wanted to leave you with on a Sunday morning. So instead, I settled on telling a story of three men. And no, this is not a dad joke or a joke at all. In fact, these three men are from the second book of our 4x4 series, the third letter of John, or third John as it's more commonly known which you can find on page 1026 in the black Bible right there in front of you. See how we did that transition? That was pretty, pretty, pretty good. I practiced that one for a few days this week. But before we continue with these three, before we continue looking at these three men, I got a quiz for you. So pay attention. I'm going to give you a summary of the quiz, and then I'm going to ask you for your answer. So let's see if you pass or fail. If you fail, oof. One of the men is a good person. Well, he may have some health issues, but his spiritual life is steady and faithful. He seeks to help those in need. He has taken Jesus' words to heart and the words of the apostles and isn't anxious about tomorrow, but instead sees an opportunity to bless others. His name is Gaius. The second man struggles a lot. He sees himself as more important than other people. He's concerned more about appearance than whether or not things get accomplished. He, get, he goes to the church and rather than support what is happening, he tears people down and fights with them and even drives them away when they do things he doesn't think are right. Meet Diotrephes. The third man has a strong testimony. He may, we may not know a lot about him. He doesn't make himself known outside, but what he does is known by many. He looks after others first and is always pointing people to Christ. Some say he is a behind-the-scenes man. But the truth is that what he does in private is seen by the one who matters most. But he does know the grace of God and he is always living out of that grace. Meet Demetrius. Two of these men get it and one of these men do not. Which, quiz time, which of these men should we not imitate? A, Gaius, B, Diotrephes, or C, Demetrius? Good, before you thought this was a trick question, you already had the answer there. It's probably the easiest question a pastor will ever ask. That's a simple question, right? B, Diotrephes. How many got it right? If you got it wrong, don't raise your hand. <laughs> we can talk after. I pretty much gave you the answer in the children's message and then again beforehand. So, but I had to sort of figured a majority of you would have gotten it right. Diotrephes is not something, someone to emulate. He is prideful. He looks out for himself. It's not what being a Christian looks like. It's not what a follower of Christ is about. Jesus himself was not selfish, nor was he prideful. He was consistently seeking to encourage people and support one another and going to the unexpected ones, the marginalized, the outcast, and serving them, building relationships with them. And by the way, this was not a new phenomenon for God. If we look back all throughout Scripture, he connects with the cultural or societal outcast, bringing them near to him. I just read that in Numbers just the other day, which I know, Numbers, with one of my kids. But we see that even way back in the Old Testament where God is seeking the societal outcast, seeking people and bringing them close to him. And he does that today as he still brings sinners, brings us even close to him. If he wasn't doing that, none of us would be here today. But as he brings people close to him, he transforms them to be his hands and feet, to go out and go in mission with him, to walk in the truth. Of Jesus, And we heard that last week when Pastor Peter preached on 2 John. Be cautious of false teachers of those that modify and change the truth, but instead stay steadfast 
and proclaim the actual truth of the God who saves. And now today in 3 John, we see that we who have been brought close and transformed by his grace, that we have the opportunity to bring that love and grace to those around us. Not because we have to, but because we get to. We get to look after people. We get to live in God's abundance of mercy. For the sake of the name, we get to support and uplift others because that is what God has done for us first. This idea of lifting up another reminds me of a fable, of a short story of a man who died. And I know we're in church, but he went to hell. This man hadn't been a bad guy. He never cussed. He never was abusive. He was kind to people. He supported the right group. He gave to charities. He did all of the right things. He even left a rather large inheritance for his family because of the way he lived his life looking out for himself. He was able to support things and and protect them. You know, he lived a good life. Some may even call it the American dream. But he didn't have God in his life. And so when he died, he went to hell. While he was confused about what he was doing there, he found hell to be a beautiful place. This is a a fake story. He found hell to be a beautiful place until he noticed everyone around him was emaciated. And he was even more confused because when he went to the cafeteria to eat, there was food everywhere. It was overflowing with food, with bread and fruit and vegetables and pasta, tacos, my, one of my favorite foods. Food everywhere. But being observant, however, he had noticed that the only way people were allowed to eat was with a long ladled spoon that made it almost impossible to actually get the food into their mouths. Because as they lifted that food up, they tried to get it into their mouth. It sloshed and spilt everywhere. And as it fell to the floor, it spoiled. And so he, like everyone else around, dwindled away pound by pound. Again, fake story. But one day he signed up for a field trip to heaven. (laughs) I told you it was a made-up story. When he got there, he saw happy people, well-fed and exuberant, walking around on beautiful landscape, gardens and streets of gold, about what you would expect heaven to be. But then lunchtime came, and the man was confused. How were all these people so happy and well-fed when there was so little food in the cafeteria? And worse yet, he thought they were eating with the same long-ladled spoons that were causing so much frustration and emaciation in hell. But then again, the ever-observant man saw the difference. The people in the cafeteria around him weren't losing weight and they weren't struggling to eat because instead of trying to feed themselves with those long-ladled spoons, they were using those spoons to feed the person next to them. They didn't spill anything as they fed the person next to them. A simple shift in perspective led to transformation of the heart. A simple priority change in the situation of the entire life of the community was transformed. When he asked the person next to him why she fed the other, she said, because I am not here by my own doing, but because of another. And for his sake, I will always seek to build a relationship with those around me so that I may know how I can serve, how they need me to serve. Because I was first loved and looked out for, even when I was in opposition to him, he gave his life for me. And so I'll always look outward first, because I know that inward, my inward life is taken care of by his loving grace. What if we as a church are always looking out to those in need? What if we get out of our comfort zone and spark a conversation with someone we don't know, seeking to understand who they are and how we can better serve them? What if you, by yourself, individually sit at a table and introduce yourself to someone? What if you ask about their interests and seek to better understand them? If we all did this, what would our community around us look like? What if instead of struggling to get the spoon to our mouth first, we brought it to our neighbor's mouths? 
Now, I know this story is one that deals with food, but what about other needs of our neighbors? How do we know those needs without talking to them, without engaging with them, without interacting with the people around us? From these questions, conversations have occurred that are leading in exciting directions as we seek to be a church that impacts the community in all different ways. As we seek to walk in the truth and go out into the community for the sake of the name. We as a church have entered into a partnership with a local school right across the street from us to provide items for the families and kids of the school. In talking with the principal and the community school coordinator, my heart broke as I heard of some of the stories of the kids that live right around us. The stories of showing up to school with clothes that don't fit because that kid has grown two sizes and they don't have the proper sizes at home or the ability to get them. Or walking to school in the middle of the winter without a jacket. Or not coming to school at all because the only clothes that they have are still wet from the laundry the night before and no one was there to put them into the dryer or they didn't have the funds to pay for that to get dry. Or not having socks to wear even though their shoes have holes in them. Church, we have an opportunity to be Gaius and Demetrius for these kids, for these families, for our community. Jesus in our gospel reading is not calling us to be anxious about tomorrow, but I can tell you that these kids and families that I talked with this week are anxious, not just about tomorrow, but about today. If we are not willing to step out into our community, into the place that God has put us and become a part, and it becomes a part of who we are, and we look outward to what difference that we can be making, who are we really looking out for? Where is our long ladled spoon going? And are we then being diatrophies and only looking out for our own self interest? Are we imitating evil and not good? It is because of this that we are able to help provide uniforms for that school across the street, for Oakland's elementary. We're teaming up with the administration to become a community team member with them to serve our immediate neighbors, some of the most vulnerable in their time of need. These uniforms are just the beginning of that partnership and ways that we can serve those around us. We serve those around us through the food bank, through Lars, through the Elizabeth House, through many different ways we serve those around us. And I know I'm forgetting other ones, but we can find more ways to serve people around us so they know that we are a church who cares for the sake of the name. You are a part of this effort. And you can also be a part of this effort to provide what is needed for these families. Today in our monthly newsletter, The Sounds, and next week in the Pulse that comes out on Thursdays, a list of items and supplies that are needed will be available so you can help support the people who live right next door to us. Your help is needed to pack the pantry, to provide items for those in need such as feminine hygiene products, socks, diapers, and laundry detergent. We together can look outward to serve and build relationships with those around us for the sake of the name. But it's not just packing the pantry for those next door, that you can be a part of this outward looking focus. In just a few weeks, we'll have our kickoff Sunday where it's an entire church event of fellowship and worship and fun as we look forward to beginning our education hour the following week. It's also an opportunity to serve and be present with our community to be Christ to those around us. Fun, fellowship, laughing, joy, games, food, all of that is part of building relationships that create trust and mutual respect where we can proclaim the gospel to those around us. 8,000 postcards were, are being mailed out to invite the community to this day of food, fun, and games. And I'm asking you to come to support, to volunteer, to help, to even sit at a table and talk to someone you don't know, 
to volunteer, to help with a game or the grill, to donate monetarily if you feel so led to the evangelism designated fund if you are able to so that we can make sure there is enough food and fun for everyone. And just like we read today in our reading from 3 John and as you all got the answer to the quiz right, don't be Diotrephes who squashed all ideas and creativity because it didn't put himself first, that he couldn't use that ladle to feed himself with whatever was planned. He didn't want to help. He didn't support reaching out to those around him or serving or anything that wasn't for his own self-interest. I know that's not the kind of church that we are. And I know that's not the kind of church that we want to be, that we want to be going out into our community, serving all for the sake of the name. For Jesus, who sought out each one of us, claiming you and me as his own, and by his sacrifice giving us life and hope in abundance. And as we read in Luke, what greater treasure is there in all the world than the one that brings eternal joy? My friends, walk in that truth and serve the God who sent his son for you by looking outward and serving others for the sake of his name. Amen. Please rise and join with me as we confess our faith. We confess what God has done for us through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I invite you to join with us in prayer this morning, led by our worship assistant, Jerry Radice. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, increase our faith in your wise ways and your gracious will. Preserve us from reliance on our own plans and natural powers that we would ever trust in you and be counted righteous in your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Lord, you have raised up children for Abraham from all the nations through faith in your word and promise. So bless your church on earth by the seed of Father Abraham, our Lord Jesus Christ, that your people would be defended against the assaults and temptations of the adversary that God's people would be salt and light, and that the world would see and glorify God. By your Holy Spirit, grant us to live unto righteousness in Christ and to shine like the stars in the heavens forever and ever. Lord, in your mercy. Holy Father, you promised great and abundant blessings to Abram, which he believed by faith. Bless the hearts of Christian fathers to prize the gift of their children and to work in their lives for the good of generations yet unseen. Lord, in your mercy. God Almighty, teach the rulers of the nations how small and fleeting their reigns are. Shepherd them by the preaching of your church into the ways of peace, and fix their eyes on the better country that is to come, that they would rule in loving service to those in their charge. We pray for peace in Russia's war against Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, you call us to cast our anxieties upon you because you care for us. In the midst of their tribulation, bless your people with your peace, especially Craig, Elizabeth, Jim, Russell, Naomi, those listed in our grapevine, those held privately in our hearts, and all persons in need of physical, spiritual, mental, and or emotional healing. 
We pray for all those mourning the loss of life and affected by the floods in Kentucky and Uganda, that all those in crisis would be strengthened with the power through Christ's spirit inwardly, encouraged in faith and not lose hope, experience the presence of God, and that God graciously lead and provide. That the global church remember the poor and serve its neighbors and fellow brothers and sisters in faith who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, our God, grant your Holy Spirit unto your servants who recline at your table this day. Enlighten them by your word as a lamp unto their feet, that they would be dressed in readiness for the coming of the Son of Man, both now and at the end of days, even as he girds himself to serve them with his body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you accomplished your divine will through the lives and deaths of your saints throughout the ages. Comfort all who mourn in our day, especially Norma Modest and family mourning the passing of her nephew, the Perry and Ruckenbrod families mourning the passing of Dale Perry, and inspire faith in us through the godly example of those who have gone before us and are with Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, knowing that you will hear the prayers of your people and answer us with your mercy, providing all things needful and beneficial to us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. A few quick announcements. As you may have noticed, we're still in our 4x4 four four series. This is the second week, so you've made it through. You've made it halfway through. Good job. Only two more weeks left. Jude next week, followed by Obadiah. Jude is what we're going to encourage you to read this week. If you didn't get the chance to read Third John this last week, it honestly is the shortest book in the Bible. Maybe not by verses, but by word count, it is the shortest one. So take, you know, five, ten minutes, read Third John, and then Switch right to the very next page if it's the page next door and read Jude uh, to prepare for next week. This upcoming Saturday is our food bank, Smiling Souls Food Bank, 9 a.m. to 11. If you or somebody you know needs uh, food to, to, if they need food, I don't know what I was trying to say there, but if they need food, please show up or guide them here, direct them here on Saturday, 9 a.m. to 11. If you are interested in helping, I know packing and setup is desperately needed on Friday. They pack all the food into the bags on Friday. So if you're interested, please let us know in the church office and we will connect you uh, with the Smiling Souls food bank packing and set up on Friday and then distribution on Saturday. Next Sunday, August 14th, LWMO Lutheran Women in Mission will be meeting again, a regular meeting next Sunday at 12 15. I believe that is the right time. I'm always wrong with that time, but I believe I'm getting vigorous head nods. 1215 next Sunday, August 14th. And then August 28th, 10 a.m. joint worship service right here inside for the church service, followed by fun outside. If you want to throw a ball and dunk someone in the water, hopefully it's not me. I'm going to just, I'll pay you to miss um, with hugs and smiles. I don't hug people, though, very often. So maybe I'll just wave at you and pray that you miss so that I don't have to get all wet. But if you're interested in coming out for that, for volunteering, or for just coming out and having some fun, we are interested in hearing from you. Please let me know or someone in the church office know so we can connect you with the appropriate leader for the different events. That's bounce houses, a slide, dunk tank, strike the bell, some food, some fun, some games, some smiles meeting and connecting with our community opportunities for relationships to be built Sunday, August 28th, 10 a.m. and then 12 to 3 for the food and the games. That is my last announcement. If you could bring the offering forward, please, ma'am, will you join me as we lift the offering up to God? Please rise as you are able. We pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for what you have done for us. Lord, we thank you for your son. It's in his name that we carry out our duties here on this earth so that more people may come to know him. Uh, Lord, send us out to proclaim your grace, your mercy, 
your peace and to serve those around us, all for the sake of his name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him our thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who calls each of us to a faith like Abraham's through the promises of forgiveness, life, and salvation, he has revealed to us by the gospel. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. The night in which Christ was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had broken it and given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he blessed it and given thanks, he gave it to the disciples and said, Take and drink, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Lord also taught us a prayer that we now join together in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. This meal has been prepared for us by Christ himself. Christ's body is present in, with, and under the bread. His blood is present with us in, with, and under the wine. If this is your confession, we invite you to come forward and receive this meal, this forgiveness of sins that is given to us by Christ himself. If you're unsure about this meal, I would love the opportunity to talk with you after the service. We ask that you still come forward, uh, but cross your arms across your chest to receive a blessing. The center of the, the wine, the blood, is grape juice. If that is something you need, there's also gluten-free wafers available in the middle of the tray as well. The meal that has been prepared for you. After, at the conclusion of the Agnus Day, please be seated. Please be seated.
I invite you to rise as you are able. Now having ate and drank the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, may it strengthen and uplift you in true faith till life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, who cares for your people, we give you thanks for feeding us in this sacrament with the true body and blood of Jesus our Savior. Keep us listening to your voice in the scriptures, trusting in your promises, and bring us at last to the joys of your kingdom and the life in your presence that never ends. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Through the blessing of our Lord this morning, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his everlasting and eternal peace.
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.